Welcome everybody. My name is Arta Kush and this is Komodo with Flux. Uh, this is uh, first of our interviews made like this. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome uh, Daniel, the Chief Strategy Officer from Flux and Zellcore, and our own Charles PTYX Gonzalez, a biz developer from Komodo. Welcome, man. Thank you for having me on. Uh, Longtime fan of the platform, so it's kind of cool to be here. It's our pleasure to have you here, Daniel. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you both by joining this interview, and uh, I would like to start with you, Daniel. Um, could you uh, tell a bit, a little bit more about Flux and the project that uh, you are behind? Absolutely. So I'll tell you a little bit about me. Uh, I'm the Chief Strategy Officer for Flux and Zellcor. Uh, Flux has been around since 2018. Um, it was originally Zellcash when it was first um, when we first came out, and then we did a rebrand and a, a fork here in January, and we turned uh, the name over to Flux. And it's been we haven't looked back since. So the the whole reason why we uh, developed the project was around at, at that particular point in time, decentralized compute. The the new uh, buzzword of the day is Web three. Um, so we are the leader, leaders of Web3. Uh, we push for decentralization, much like projects like yourself that really focus in on decentralization, making sure that people, uh, uh, the regular folks, can, can run infrastructure. And uh, we deployed our Flux nodes, which are essentially our Layer 2 solution for other blockchains to be able to run uh, their infrastructure on a decentralized platform. A lot of people will compare us to AWS, or uh, you know, the decentralized version of AWS. Um, although that's a lofty comparison and one that's centralized versus decentralized, I do like the fact that uh, it does give uh, an option to the centralized infrastructure world out there, and that's that's really what Flux is all about. Uh, one of our other products, uh, Zellcore, a multi-asset platform um, that uh, you can. Uh, uh, see today, just go download it at zellcore.io. Uh, we have about 390 plus uh, assets that are in Zellcore. And then, of course, tokens are in the 50, 60, 70,000 range. So um, we support many different chains in their token assets as well. So, yeah, that's a little bit about uh, the project and, and us. Um, our continued drive is is to partner with logical partners, just like right now, um, that uh, give us the best opportunity. We don't believe in competition. We believe in opportunities, much, much like what I felt like as I started to talk to you guys. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, what, what a great introduction. Uh, Charles, I would like to bounce back to you and ask, um, about the relationship that we're having now, this kind of new relationship with Flux and Zellcore. Uh, how could you compare also Komodo to, to Flux and, and their community? Yeah, so we were talking about the, the similarities between the projects. And um, I think, you know, it's, it's very interesting uh, to compare both projects. Both projects are concentrated on decentralization. Uh, with Flux, they, they have gone a little bit of a different route than Komodo, whereas Komodo is focused on decentralized trading. Uh, Flux has gone uh, the route of like a decentralized uh, network and, and infrastructure, and they provide a lot of infrastructure for many different projects. So I do think um, both projects coming together complement each other in that sense, uh, where we can actually leverage some of the things that Flux has done uh, into our project, and uh, Flux can leverage the decentralized trading uh, into, into their networks. Absolutely. Daniel, I wanted to ask you, uh, who's behind Flux? What is the team like? Uh, how many of you there are? Uh, well, we, we are truly a decentralized uh, platform. Um, the, the three co-founders, myself, uh, Tadej and Parker, uh, we've been with the project since its inception. It's the only project we work on. We don't care about anything but making sure that we work with uh, you know other par partner projects that that help to develop the ecosystem so that's our sole focus um we have about 53 people working on the project right now and uh i we it may be higher because we had uh, two or three new hires that we're getting ready to start um we have uh our senior developer volter we have uh, another senior developer uh jeremy anderson who's uh was he's kind of 
infamous and famous for cre helping create Ravencoin. So, you know, we, we, we've tapped into some of the best talent in the space to come into the project and help us grow. And uh, it's, it's working out quite nicely. So um, we really focus around projects that add value. So we look at projects that are logistically aligned with our ethos. Um, we, we tend not to be, we're kind of different than everything in crypto. You guys are the same way. Like, I love the way that you guys run your project. It's not shilly. It's not uh, fomo -y, It's, you know, very uh, tech-driven. It's uh, community-based driven, which is exactly uh, what we are as well. Um, and, you know, that's what we tend to gravitate toward. We gra gravitate toward those opportunities where we can bolster both of those communities. That is great. Um, Daniel, maybe you could, you could tell us more a little bit about the product that you have and uh, the use cases and applications of it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Flux OS is uh, it's based on uh, it's built on top of the Linux operating system. Uh, and really what it is, is uh, our Flux, it, it powers our Flux nodes, which are essentially a decentralized computational network. It allows individuals in the community to supply the infrastructure um good a good analogy if, if you have somebody out there that that wants to understand this super easy is right now if you want to run a vps or a server you go to uh aws and you uh, you pay to aws you stand the server up and that's the infrastructure aws is is kind of acting as that gateway uh to whatever technology needs that you have flux is a little bit different because you actually go in and you stand up uh, the infrastructure on Flux, but it's rewarding the individuals who are actually facilitating those servers on the back end. So we take the third party out of it, and that's what we're all about. We're all about taking third parties peer to peer uh, directly, and that's really the concept of of what Web three is. So we were doing Web three before Web three was cool, um, and and now it seems to everything seems to be come coming to fruition in terms of you know our vision. That is great. Uh, Ch Charles, uh, knowing that you already were kind of um, into Flux for uh, almost a year as an outsider, maybe you have some uh, feedback, your own personal uh, experiences with the application. Uh, most of the experience that I have with, with Flux or the, the products that they've built were through a different project that actually reached out to us and they were, uh, they were building a service and that had Flux integrated into it. It was like a social network. And that was that was over a year ago. That's the first time I heard of Flux. Um, but uh, soon after, I started using uh, Zellcore, and I reached out to the Kadena team and uh, started building a relationship with them. And that's really when I started getting into like what actually Flux was. Um, and it was pretty amazing because to that point, I had no clue what it was. Um, and I had been using, you know, uh, their, their applications for some time. Um, uh, I think, I think it's, it's a, it's an interesting concept, uh, and they're probably one of the, uh, the projects that has done it the longest, uh, and, and it's, and it's doing it so well that, uh, that you can use the, the applications and you can use the network without actually realizing you're using Flux. So that, that's really something, uh, something to say about the project. That, that is one of the dreams that blockchain enthusiasts uh, think about for a long period of time of having blockchain integrations and usability without having no knowledge that you're using blockchain technology. That is yeah, an absolute my, dream. My wife goes to uh, the ATM machine, she puts her card in, she puts her pin out, she takes her, her money and she's on her way. She doesn't care about the logistic complications that from getting point A to point B and doing all of these things behind the scenes. So, Indeed. yeah, usability and uh, allowing de developers to actually use the platform at a very high level, so that block like like you just uh, you just stated. I mean, having that uh, that seamless feel uh, to to blockchain for deployments on all levels is that's that's paramount. That's exactly what we have to do. Yep. Indeed. And another great news is uh, going around that uh, Zellcore is thinking about integrating Atomic Dex into their wallet. Maybe you have some comments about that, Daniel. Oh, we're excited. Uh, we, we, we love the Atomic Dex, uh, big fans of it. Um, as I said, we always like to look for logical partnerships, and we think that uh, the fact that Flux will be available on the Atomic Dex inside of Zellcore 
that's going to be fantastic. So it's going to allow any asset that that's traded on the atomic decks to, you know, we're big on self custody. And that's why uh, DEX models that allow you to maintain your self-custody while you're in, in the process of using the platforms, that's, you know, that's super important. Yeah, this is good uh, for, for the project. And it'll be interesting to see how we can use uh, Flux. I remember back when I first learned about it, the, the project that reached out to us wanted us to add Flux to the Komodo network. And at the time, we just didn't understand enough to like say like let's go ahead with it. But if we integrated it into the, like the atomic, like the the deep pound network, the uh, the notary notes would actually get paid extra. So it's something we might be able to to do later at a later point. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. I had a question. Can you store um, like? images uh video and things like that on on a flux no uh node oh yeah absolutely we have a uh, flux box which is our our version of dropbox that allows mm -hmm. people to, to to do store storage on the nodes you asked about ipfs and we will be adding the ipfs that's on our roadmap to to finish that out and we are going to do hardened and secure containers and we're also looking at other uh, other avenues as well so the the ultimate goal is to provide you with the the privacy the security and the uh, the ability the scalability uh to to deploy these these applications this infrastructure um on a grand scale so um make it easy uh i'll tell you from an operational standpoint it's kind of cool because we use everything we do in terms of file shares and things like that that's all on flux you know and it's really super powerful you can see it on flux os now if you go there you can see flux uh box and then you can see the how you can do the dropbox click and drag and and share files so yeah oh wow that's pretty cool that is awesome the first time i've ever seen ipfs being integrated was past 2018 when the decentralized social media networks were coming up like steam and then later hive and then they introduced the uh, ipfs where you can just run a node and and store all the videos with like tenth of an amount of, of a weight of the file on the node just like that that i, I think that's like um, almost groundbreaking yeah, I think we're seeing a lot of this technology that we have dreamed about start to come to fruition because we've, you know, we've worked super hard. Uh, the nice thing about what we've done as well is we've learned from other people's mistakes. We've looked at projects that have developed uh, like Ethereum and things like that. Um, and, and we actually designed our project in reverse. We looked at how, what were their success points and then how can we start to be successful long term? And that's how we actually came up with our scaling uh, solutions as well. So um, Flux can scale. It can scale rapidly on demand. Um, you know, uh, we have about 2,600, 2,700 <laughs> nodes running now, but we will, after our happening in uh, Q1, um, my forecast is 10,000 plus nodes, and these are all computational nodes. Uh, we also have deployed our Jetsons, which are, um, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen a Jetson, but it looks like a little Raspberry Pi for AI and, and edge edge case scenarios so uh you'll be able to stand those th you can run those devices today but the lockup is pretty high it's ten thousand flux which is about thirty thousand dollars today uh that moves oh. down to that moves down to about five flux like literally five wow. flux um and the nice thing about it is the foundation has donated a, a fairly large amount of money for people to start deploying these in in third world countries and all around the world so um, and then we can also oh. deploy Raspberry Pis as well. So our goal is to keep it as decentralized as humanly possible. Uh, we want to make sure that we are wise about that as well and work with legacy-based infrastructure that is looking to develop into Web3. We would be, we'd be remiss if we didn't acknowledge that you know the Web2 folks are going to port to Web3. And we can either yeah. fight them or we can work with them to get to a better a better internet for everyone so yeah that's that's kind of where we're at with that yeah it seems it seems inevitable yeah so yep. uh i know that flux is being surrounded by so many other uh different communities uh and projects maybe you can speak a little bit about those oh I, yeah absolutely and we're we're really super lucky uh to have good com communities like yours 
uh, that support us as well. Uh, KDA, which is another partner that we work with, they actually run their uh, a good part of their decentralized infrastructure on Flux. So I think we have a th over a thousand nodes, uh, decentralized nodes being uh, for KDA being ran on, and, and and we support them. I I think in the end, K KDA is a is is a big one for you know a layer one solution to replace um, you know Ethereum. I don't think Ethereum can scale effectively. And I think there are other projects like uh, KDA that has kind of figured out that scaling uh, challenges. Uh, we work with PreSearch, which is, uh, I, I say it's better than Google, right? It's way better than Google. We like we like PreSearch. We work with the Firo team. Uh, we've worked with, I mean, the, par par the list of partnerships kind of goes on and on. And every one of these partners, they're not partnerships. They're not empty promises of like, hey, we're gonna an announce an announcement about an announcement, and then we're gonna say we're partnering with somebody, but then we really don't get anything that comes out of it. So uh, these are all really highly developed partnerships, conventional business model stuff. So you know we're used to that in the business world. So what we're trying to do is bring some business sense and um, uh, best practices to blockchain and crypto. So our focus is always we're cypherpunks at heart. We we love decentralization. We love privacy. And uh, but we all are uh, we all know enough to be dangerous in the b corporate world as well. <laughs> so that's that was that's what really makes us a little bit more unique than, um, you know, your your everyday run of the mill um, blockchain based project. Indeed, the power is in working together, rather uh, making the same thing on the two ends. And uh, Charles, I wanted to ask, uh, how would you compare uh, Komodo to Flux in this sense also? Um, I think, you know, both projects are unique. It's hard to, to compare them directly because we're doing separate things. Um, now, in the in in the past, I would say two years, um, Komodo has sort of shifted gears uh, towards more of like a business-oriented model. Uh, you know, Komodo is an open source project, so it took us a while to sort of find a balance between uh, one, like, what are the strengths of Komodo? What exactly do we want to do? And we finally found that through the Atomic Dex. Um, and we do have other technologies. Uh, we've built, uh, I think we were the first to build several technologies, but what we excel at is a peer-to-peer -peer trading. And in, in the past two years, um, again, we, we shifted gears to more of, of, of a business sense um, to try to, instead of um, you know, uh, working with projects uh, through letting them use our technology. We're more of doing outreach now, trying to build these relationships. Um, and, you know, with Flux, again, I, I would like to mention, you know, you can just see it. Um, if you go on their website, if you look at their services, they're very, very business oriented. Uh, so, you know, you, you can compare the projects uh, by, by these similarities, but we're doing two different ends of things. And, and, and I think that's actually what's powerful about, you know, both projects coming together and helping each other. Um, we're going to learn a lot from Flux and Flux will uh, learn a lot from us in regards Absolutely. to the Atomic Dex. Uh, and it's, it's exciting. Yeah, Thank not you, only uh, the, Ato the Atomic Dex, but in other areas. You guys have been very, uh, we've worked together for years in, in, in a roundabout kind of way. So, um, you know, we're super excited. Uh, the one thing that I will add to that as well is, um, you know, uh, a lot of times people compare uh, blockchain or crypto projects to cars. They say it's a car. Well, we know there's many different types of vehicles, right? So um, there's many different types of projects and what they focus on. Uh, I am a firm believer in interchain operability. So I believe that if we can get to the point where we stop being tribalistic about our bags and we worry about the technology growth model, I think interchain operability is the holy grail. Uh, two projects like this working together for the betterment, you know, Flux is not decentralized finance. We're not. We're not yeah. a decentralized DEX. We're not. But guess what? You guys are, and we're going to work with you, and we're real happy to do that. So um, I think when people really get to the point where they're um, less defensive about their particular blockchain project being the end-all, be-all, and more inclusive to people developing open source, um, uh, well-developed, well-deployed, uh, well-tested uh, environments, I think, I think it brings everybody together again. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, that's really nice role out. You kind of run in front of me with the 
multi-chain vision, but I think you nicely covered that. Uh, as this interview is coming to an end, just wanted to thank you, Daniel and Charles, for coming here and having this time with us. Um, I wish the brightest future for both projects, and I, I see us working together strongly in, in upcoming years. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you thank as well. Yeah, thank you for having me, and thank you to the, for the community to taking the opportunity to listen to this. I really do appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Looking forward to the next one, absolutely. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.